Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I bring you guys a brand new video today, and today we are gonna break down a tier list for Pokemon Unite, the brand new MOBA game launching on the Nintendo Switch on the 21st of July, which is actually the day after this video goes out. I'm gonna be breaking down this tier list based on the beta from my experience of playing over 20 hours of that beta. And while I didn't play every single character, I played pretty much every single character and I got to watch a lot of gameplay footage. So I think I have a pretty solid understanding of how to break this down and kind of which characters I think are gonna stand out the most when we jump into the actual game. As an FYI, you actually can preload Pokemon Unite onto your Nintendo Switch right now. And the game is gonna be releasing at some point tomorrow. Yo guys, just a quick update. We now actually have the official release time for Pokemon Unite. It's coming out at 7 UTC. So you can use the time zone converter. For me, that's 3 a.m. Eastern time. And I will be live streaming Pokemon Unite at 3 a.m. Eastern time. I'm gonna be uh, taking a nap today for that, but I'll see you there for the launch. Enjoy the tier list video. Be sure to hit that like button down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new as I'm gonna be posting a ton of Pokemon Unite gameplay. And this video is meant to just give you kind of a little bit of a guide on what characters you might wanna try out or experiment with. But as always, we don't know if there's gonna be changes from the beta to right now. They could have made changes, so just keep that in mind, right? They, they do tweaks and there's gonna be buffs and nerfs to different Pokemon. And you know, a high level player on a great team can make a certain Pokemon function really well versus a Pokemon, a player playing solo using a Pokemon may not be nearly as effective. So obviously there's gonna be some subject subjectivity to this list, but we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna break it down, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you agree, disagree, or have any other opinions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get this tier list started and let's break down the characters for Pokemon Unite. Now, as you can see, I've got a few characters already slotted as not available. Zeraora will be launching with the game's launch, but uh, Blastoise, Gardevoir, and Clefable, I have no experience with because I did not play the Canadian beta, so I don't have any experience with those characters, but I can break down pretty much everything else, so let's talk about them. So the first Pokemon we're gonna talk about is Venusaur, and I played a lot of Venusaur, actually. I found this to be an incredibly fun character, but it did leave a little bit to be desired. And actually, before I go any further, I do wanna say that I felt that every Pokemon has its own unique kind of role and could function in a positive way in any scenario. So I don't really think there was any bad Pokemon per se, but I am gonna start this tier list off by ranking Venusaur a little bit on the lower side. It does have an ability to pull the opponents closer to it with its regular attack. I enjoyed using Giga Drain and Petal Dance. I found that those are really, really cool options. Sludge Bomb was really nice because that poison was really good. Solar Beam was something I didn't play around with as much, but apparently was kind of its best approach and it can deal a lot of damage, but it did seem like it was a little bit underwhelming from a damage perspective. And it seemed like while it could take some good hits and really deal some damage from an AOE perspective with Petal Dance, it really felt like it was a little bit underwhelming compared to some of the other uh, kind of characters in the game that could deal higher amounts of damage. So I'm gonna rank Venusaur a little bit low. I like to see it get a little bit of a buff as we kind of roll out into the official launch. I liked playing it. It was a super fun character to play, but it did seem a little underwhelming compared to a few of the other characters. So Gengar is our next Pokemon, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed Gengar's kit. I thought Hex was a super cool move to utilize with moves like Sludge, and I felt that it had great movement speed, could really get around the map pretty well. Dream Eater was a fun move to use as well, but again, this Pokemon is incredibly squishy, and it doesn't do a really good job in crowds, right? It really struggles with that. And if you don't hit that perfect Dream Eater combo or you don't get that poison off and then land the Hex or maybe your Shadow Ball misses, it can really seem a little bit underwhelming. So I think of all the Pokemon on our tier list today, I would like to see Gengar get a buff because I do feel like with a little bit more damage output, it could be really good. Maybe I wasn't playing with the proper item combinations, but I did feel like Gengar was just a little bit underwhelming at this point. I'm gonna be real when I rank Mr. Mime here. I'm gonna rank him in B tier for now. I have a feeling that Mr. Mime is going to end up being one of the standout Pokemon of this game, uh, but it's gonna take a little bit of a higher skill level that I have to be able to navigate Mr. Mime. Okay, so Mime, I've concluded, is definitely not for me. Mr. Mime's real specialty is crowd control, right? He's able to use those different barriers to kind of stop opponents and split teams up and kind of separate the opponents. So it's really gonna be used in conjunction with a proper kind of attacker or all-arounder Pokemon, whereas Mr. Mime obviously functions in the support role. So I felt like playing solo, which is what I played most of the time, Mr. Mime was a little clunky for me to try to use. Again, I think a higher level player can probably take advantage of Mr. Mime pretty well. I do feel like there's other Pokemon that did Mr. Mime's job a little bit better up to this point. So that's something that I wanna keep an eye on as the, the actual game rolls out. 
whether we see any kind of changes to Mr. Mime. It can take a decent amount of damage. Its filter ability allows it to take hits a little bit better. And uh, it can move around the map pretty well. And again, section things off. But I wasn't convinced that Mr. Mime's kit was powerful enough, especially when you have other characters that can do similar roles that I thought were better. I'm going to put our first S tier as Snorlax. And while admittedly I didn't play Snorlax a ton, Talking about Mr. Mime and crowd control, I think Snorlax has one of the best abilities to crowd control in the game with its block ability. It puts that barrier up and can just simply push the opponents away. So if you're paired with the proper striker, you can really pair Snorlax with them, push the uh, you know group away and kind of single off different enemies. It also has the ability to kind of stun with its body slam attack. It has the ability to recover itself. It's got an incredible amount of health pool. So it doesn't really go down very quickly. Snorlax is an absolute monster and I expect this to be one of the top picks in the game when Unite officially drops. Absol was probably one of my favorite characters to play because of its mobility. It can really just wreck an opposing Pokemon. It's not the best when it comes to crowds. Like if you run an Absol into like four or five Pokemon, it's probably gonna struggle unless you're using its Unite move. But I felt like when it's able to single off an opposing Pokemon, it can be so insane because of how fast it can kind of zip around the, the map. And if you're pairing it with those critical hits and those super luck boosting ability, you can deal just an absurd amount of damage. So I'm actually gonna put Absol in the A tier right now. Again, this is one of my favorite characters to play in the Unite beta. I felt like it was super offensive. It dealt an absurd amount of damage and it starts off as an Absol, so you don't really see any sort of power drop off or anything like that. It really straight stays strong pretty much through the entirety of the match. And again, when it gets into those matchups against a single Pokemon, it can absolutely destroy. I would say of all the Pokemon that stood out to me in terms of playing against them, I would say Garchomp stood out the most. And I'm going to put Garchomp in the S tier for now. If a well-fed Garchomp will just absolutely carry, it is insane. And I don't want to fight this Garchomp. He's level 10, bro? What? How is that Garchomp level 10? He's level 11. I, I don't... I. I just die. You just die instantly. It's mind-blowing. It, it has an absurd amount of output, has a good natural bulk, has decent mobility. And again, if you can get this thing fed early in the game, it is absolutely insane. I think it's when it hits 11, it fully evolves, and it gets its Unite move. And at that point, Garchomp just starts shredding. I look for this to be one of the staples in the game and one of the most popular picks and one of the most disruptive picks, especially when it comes to, like I said, just getting that jungle going and really feeding up those different uh, smaller creatures uh, to kind of support the team and bouncing back and forth. I think Garchomp really covers that role pretty well and can deal an absurd amount of damage, especially when it gets to those higher levels. Another Pokemon that we're going to look at now is Lucario. And I have to say, Lucario has one of the best passive abilities in the game, where when you get him to a low enough amount of health, it actually kicks on a shield for him and increases his movement speed. So you think you're about to knock this thing out, and then it actually gets more health or it can run away. That's actually busted, and I'm actually going to put it in S tier as one of the strongest Pokemon in Unite. I feel like Lucario is so good, and it doesn't start off as Riolu. It starts as, as Lucario, so it, it really starts off very, very strong. It can deal massive amounts of damage, has decent mobility, and just overall is an incredible threat in Pokemon Unite. One of the things I loved about Lucario was close combat. The fact that you can just charge forward and you can knock or stun back your opponent can deal some crazy amounts of damage. Again, this Pokemon starts off strong, stays strong mid-game, and can finish strong as well. Another all-around threat, and I feel like Lucario is probably one of the big standouts. Now, you already know, if there's one Pokemon in this list that I could talk about, it is Crustle. I probably did... 15 hours of Crustle gameplay. I'm going to put it in A tier. And one of the things I love about Crustle is its kit. I feel like there's a few different things you can do. You can run Rock Tomb to set up those walls and set up crowd control. You can also use Stealth Rock, which is super good for defeating those mini bosses. And I love it against Zapdos late game. But I think we need to talk about Shell Smash plus X Scissor. The fact that you can boost your attack and your movement speed to either engage or disengage into a fight, as well as X Scissor, which can deal an absurd amount of damage to not just one, but multiple enemies. I look for Crustle to be one of the highest tier picks in the game. And I think that people may not pick it because games like this, I feel like, especially on launch, people are going to pick their favorites, right? Crustle is probably not going to be many people's favorites, but it's definitely a Pokemon to look out for because, again, it can run multiple different roles in terms of with the crowd control with its Rock Tomb or kind of spreading uh, areas, uh, opponents out with that Stealth Rock, which is going to deal uh, chip damage over time. Or again, you can use that Shell Smash X Scissor set, which is just mind blowing. I mean, that thing can deal so much damage. Big fan of Crustal. It's going to be my primary pick for Unite when it drops. So Greninja is a, a unique pick and a Pokemon that I played a decent amount. And I got to say, I love Water Shuriken. It's a ranged attacker. Can deal a good amount of damage with that Water Shuriken. You also have the option of running Surf. And then you've got a couple different more like utility moves like Double Team. I'm going to put Greninja in B tier. And I think that Greninja is one of those uh, characters that 
definitely uh, kind of invites a higher level of play. You really want to hit those water shurikens. If you're dealing uh, damage there and you're actually able to hit those every single time, you're going to be really uh, kind of depleting the opponent's HP. I love its movement speed, obviously a little bit squishy as an attacker, but I think Greninja in the right hands can be an absolute top tier pick, but I'm a big fan of it. I enjoyed playing it. I thought it was one of the more fun kits to play. Uh, and again, if you're hitting those water shuriken, it, it's, it's quite nice, actually. The next Pokemon we're going to rank is Talonflame. And I got to say, Talonflame is seemingly absurdly squishy. I feel like you throw like a pebble at it and it dies. And that's kind of indicative of the main series games as well. I'm going to put Talonflame in the... I think I'm going to go with the, the, the B tier. I'm, I'm kind of leaning B and C. I'm going to put it in B tier. And the reason why I'm going to give it that little bit of buff up is simply because it's mobility. There was a few instances, especially mid to late game, where you can take a Talonflame. And if you're carrying a good amount of points, you can actually flank the entire team and try to score behind the opposing team when they're not even kind of, when they're engaging up in a fight kind of midfield. And you can kind of push behind them because you're so fast. You have such high mobility, which is something that is really unique to Talonflame. It is, it is pretty much one of the fastest characters in the game, which gives it that mobility. I did feel like it's power output was very much so lacking i love its unite move it can deal some absurd amounts of damage with that but otherwise its other attacks i felt like were a little bit underwhelming kind of leaving a little bit to be desired it really needs to be paired with another pokemon that could deal more damage or with a really good support with it uh something that can kind of slow things down we're going to talk about some of those supports as we kind of move through this tier list here but again it, it does stand out with its speed i feel like there's definitely a niche there but uh, otherwise i just felt like it was a little bit underwhelming especially compared to some of the all-around characters the next character we're going to talk about is charizard I feel like Charizard, I'm going to put in the A tier. It's a really solid all-around pick. I think it's going to be probably one of the more popular characters that you see people play. I felt like while it does have really good damage output and actually has a pretty kind of versatile kit and the fact that it can gain shield while it's flare blitzing it can deal damage over time with things like uh fire blast it can burn opponents and lunge forward and deal residual damage and overall just kind of function as that all-around role so it could do a lot of a little bit of everything i'll be real as much as i love charizard it's not a character i played a ton of but it's something that i expect to see a lot of when the game officially launches Cinderace is an attacker that has decent mobility and evolves pretty quickly. By level 7, you'll be able to get Cinderace from having a Score Bunny. I feel like this Pokemon can deal really cool damage, and it's one of those Pokemon that the more times you hit the opponent up to three times, it actually starts to really stack that damage. It's got decent mobility. You can use things like Blaze Kick to kind of attack and then lunge back, and you can use Faint to gain immunity for a little bit of time. So there's definitely some viability there. I'll be real, I, I didn't play a ton of Cinderace. I, I really focused on playing against it. That was really what happened. I had no point that I really feel like it was really doing a ton in terms of impact in the match from a carry standpoint. I think this is a Pokemon to watch out for. I think this would be one of the more popular Pokemon, uh, but there was nothing that really jumped out to me with Cinderace uh, while playing the beta. When you look at this game and you look at the different unique roles that Pokemon can play, I've, I've got to put Eldegoss in S tier. Eldegoss is a super unique character right now and the fact that it can heal not only yourself, but you can heal your, your Pokemon on your team. You can deal damage damage on Pokemon on, your team, on the other team with Pollen Puff. You can slow things down. You can buff things. I mean, you could add shields. It really has an absurd amount of, uh, you know, kind of uh, versatility in terms of the game. It's got a passive that allows it to increase its movement speed when it's taking hits. And Eldegoss just seems like the perfect support kit right now. Curious to see when Blissey rolls out how that's going to play out in terms of healing. But since Eldegoss is really the primary Pokemon that can heal your allies, a well-played Eldegoss with a super good support uh, could be just absurd. Like, you put this thing with, like, a, a tanky wally type Pokemon. You pair, like, an Eldegoss with, like, a Snorlax or something like that. I think you've got an incredibly powerful combination there that's going to really, uh, you know, not go down too easily. So, I think because Eldegoss serves such a unique role right now in the game, and, and it's really the only Pokemon that's doing what it does, I got to put it in S tier. Uh, I'll be real. I struggle to play it because you really have to hit those pollen puffs. You have to be able to aim and I think that that really comes from turning auto aim off. I think it's a Pokemon that'll translate better to the mobile game as opposed to the main game because the auto aim always will target, you know, it'll it'll target, you, you know, kind of the, the uh, NPC characters like the Adinos and the Combis a lot of the time. You'll you'll go to heal your, your, your teammate and it'll auto target the opponent. So you really have to turn that off, I think, to really maximize all the Goss potential. But it's a Pokemon that I think has a lot of potential. And again, it's super unique in the role that it fulfills. I'll be real, of all the different attacking type Pokemon that I played, I really felt like Cramorant was one of, one of my favorite. And I think a lot of people were feeling that Cramorant wasn't that good, but I actually thought it was super duper good. I felt like Whirlpool was an incredible attack. I felt like Surf was really good. You could run that Surf and hit him and then hit him on the way back. I loved its Unite move where it was just firing off missiles and just blowing things back. Cramorant was one of my favorite characters to play and I felt like it was a character that if you got started early and you were able to get it leveled up early and you can get just even a one level advantage it would just blow things back dude i really felt like it was strong 
I enjoyed using Hurricane. Air Slash is really cool as it kind of pushes at the opponent and kind of pushes Cramoran back as well. So you have the opportunity to kind of not engage too closely on a Pokemon that's relatively squishy in Cramoran. You can deal a good amount of damage. I loved using this Pokemon. I really felt like it was one of the standout picks for me. I think when you look at Pikachu, you gotta consider it. I'm gonna put it in A, A tier for now. I feel like Pikachu is an incredibly powerful threat. One of the most annoying things that I feel like it does is Electroweb uh, trapping things, slowing things down, has the ability to knock and stun and really kind of disrupt the opposing team. Has pretty good damage output, great mobility, obviously on the squishy end of things, which you would expect from an attacker like Pikachu. I think Pikachu is gonna be one of the top tier picks. I think it could have definitely been categorized as S tier, but I'll be real, it's a Pokemon that I didn't have a ton of experience with playing through the beta, but I do feel like it's gonna end up ultimately being one of the top picks in the game. And it is Pikachu, it's the mascot. So you know they're gonna make it pretty good. One of the things I loved about this game, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, is how different every character seems to play. And I feel like Ninetales is one of those characters that can do so many different things. It can set up those walls with that avalanche and form crowd control. It's got a super unique uh, kind of normal single type attack and powder snow that actually hits multiple enemies at once. So when you see something like a Greninja, which is just kind of chucking off these little bubbles, it's hitting one target. But something like Ninetales can actually hit multiple targets. It can support the team with Aurora Veil. It can deal massive damage with Blizzard. I really feel like it's got a kit that's super unique and the fact that it can slow things down it can be incredibly disruptive and very difficult to play against i would say of the pokemon that i played against that were very very annoying i would say nine tails definitely was ranking at the top and i think it's versatility right now and the fact that it has a, a basic attack that can hit everything is just kind of bonkers and again it, it could do so many different things. It could set up those walls. It could deal massive damage. It could slow opponents down. It can buff its team with a Aurora Veil. So many things that Ninetales can do. I look for this Pokemon to really stand out in this game. This is something I never thought I would say, but one of my favorite characters to use in this game was actually Wigglytuff. And I'm gonna put Wigglytuff in S tier. And again, I wanna emphasize that I feel like all these Pokemon have their use and I think in the right hands could be very powerful. But Wigglytuff was one of my favorite characters to use. And I, again, I never would've thought I said that because I don't like Wigglytuff as a Pokemon. But Sing is so good. The fact that you increase your movement speed, you start singing enemies, and then you're putting things to sleep and you can sleep multiple targets, and if they get hit, they do not wake up right away. The fact that you can keep singing everything and just put things to sleep, if you pair, now Wigglytuff on its own is not gonna do well, right? If you're just rocking Wigglytuff solo, it's gonna be useless. But if you pair it with something like a Garchomp or something that can deal a massive amount of damage, a Pikachu, for example, or even a Ninetales, oh my God. This thing is ridiculous. Take a nap, Gengar. Take a nap. Take a nap, Pikachu. Take a nap! Ridiculous. I honestly feel like Wigglytuff is gonna be one of my main characters that I play. Like, if I had to pick three characters that you're gonna see me play when the game comes out, it's gonna be Crustle, it's gonna be Wigglytuff, and it's probably gonna be Cramorant. And again, aside from Crustle, I never thought I would say that. And maybe Venusaur. I really liked Venusaur, despite the fact that I ranked it pretty low. Wigglytuff was so fun. Sing is so good. It's so fun to just run around and sing things to sleep. But again, it really does need a super good striker to kind of go with it. One of the more annoying Pokemon to play against was definitely Slowbro. Slowbro just has absurd amounts of bulk and it seems like it never dies. And of course, has the ability to use telekinesis to raise a Pokemon up in the air and disrupt what they're doing pull them towards it, and then deal a decent amount of damage. It obviously is there to take on damage. It can heal itself up in the early game. So I'm gonna put Slowbro in B tier. I feel like this is a Pokemon that, again, has a lot of different things it can do with Amnesia, and now also you can use Scald, and then you could potentially use Surf. So you got a couple different options there in terms of what you wanna run this thing with. I really, I really hated, I should say, facing against the Telekinesis set because I just felt like it was so annoying. Uh, but again, Slowbro is not a character that I played a ton of, but I played against it a lot. So I would say it's something to keep an eye on. I, I don't necessarily think it's going to be one of the top tier Pokemon, uh, especially out the gate. But I think it's pretty interesting, and, and we'll have to see how it all plays out with little, little Slowbro there. And last but not least is going to be Machamp. And I will say I did not play Machamp myself. I played against it a bunch. And this Pokemon was one of those Pokemon where if you're facing off a of Machamp and it starts to kind of steamroll and starts to gain a little bit of momentum... It can deal an absurd amount of damage and start to really, really wreck your team. I actually felt like the times that I felt like my Pokemon just vanished on me, like just died right away, did come from Machamp a lot. I'm going to put it in B tier right now because, again, this is a Pokemon that I don't have a ton of experience with and I didn't get to play it myself. But I will say when I did play against it and it was well fed and it was a couple levels above or even a level or two above, its damage output was insane. It can actually charge forward with things like Submission. It's got moves like Dynamic Punch and it, most of its attacks are increasing its, its offensive output as it kind of goes. So Machamp, something to look out for. Again, 
I don't have a ton of experience with it, but a really cool Pokemon, and uh, I definitely got wrecked by it a few times. So this is my tier list for Pokemon Unite, and as I said, this is based on the beta and my experience of about 20, 22 hours of playtime. There was a handful of Pokemon that really stood out to me, as I mentioned, and I tried to rank them based on my experience of playing them, playing against them, and kind of what I've seen from their abilities. At any point in time, they can be buffed or nerfed, but I think this is a good starting point. But I think it's important to remember that while this game is going to be new and coming out tomorrow, which again, you can preload it on your Switch, uh, I recommend playing the character that you find the most fun and experiment, try different things out, see what's going to make you happy, and don't worry too much about where things are ranked because at the end of the day, there's going to be a meta game that's going to form, there's going to be a counter meta game that's going to form, and a lot of this is going to come down to team play, strategy, working together, and uh, taking, making the most out of each Pokemon, right? Because I think that they did a great job of allowing each Pokemon to shine in its own role and do something different. Uh, uh, whereas some games you have Pokemon that really serve the same purpose. I really felt like almost every Pokemon here can do its own thing. And I think that that's really exciting. We'll have to see how everything plays out. But I hope you guys enjoyed my tier list breakdown and my rankings of these different Pokemon. Be sure to like the video if you guys did. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And that's going to be it for me, guys. My name is Dan. I also go by A-Drop. And I will see you guys for the Pokemon Unite beta. Actually, just kidding. The Pokemon Unite full launch on my live streams. I'm going to be streaming it like crazy at twitch.tv slash A-Drop. I'll see you guys there for the official launch. Peace.